We are with the Far Cry 4's level design director. Just for the Shangri-La For the Shangri-La missions. That's it. That's it. Which are some visionary, very nice, very a little bit confusing missions in uh, in the game that you access through tapestries in the temples. That's right. Uh, and they are actually a really interesting way to tell the story of the of the world of Far Cry 4. Uh, how did the idea come about? Because it's kind of str it's very different from the mushroom we had in Far Cry 3. Oh yeah. So. We wanted to do something that would actually um, allow us to kind of give more depth to the world of Kirat. The team in Montreal, when they created Kirat, did a ton of research. They made this amazing, big, beautiful, breathing, believable world. And we knew that, you know, when we were thinking about it, we thought, what does every old culture have? And one of the things we thought about was that you don't get a culture that's thousands of years old without also developing your own kind of heroes, your own legends and mythology. So it was from there that actually the idea of this making it the legend of Shangri-La, that, that idea was born. So the legend was actually the story of Kalanag, who was an ancient warrior from the world of Kirat, who was sent by the king of Kirat to find the sacred valley of Shangri-La. He arrived, he had an adventure, and then he returned back to Kirat. When he returned, he told of his of his journeys to a painter who created Tanka. It's uh, like an illustrated tapestry, and the painter took these five, uh, you know, these number of Tankas and basically distributed them around the world. So you actually access Shangri-La by exploring the open world of Kirat. And when you find one of these tanka, you kind of pick it up, you kind of meditate on it, and it transports you into the legend. So the thing that was really important for us was to make sure that the player is actually the one telling us the story. That's really what, the, what Shangri-La is about. The player goes in and tells us, tells the world of Kirat, what is this legend. So there are going to be choices to be made inside the world of Shangri-La? Absolutely. The, the kind of design philosophy that we followed when we were building up our spaces was uh, the 360 degree approach that they use in the creation of outposts. So all of the locations you go to, you can really approach them kind of from every angle. Uh, you're always going to see high ground, you know, where you can kind of mark your targets and take a look at things and like try and snipe with your bow. You're always going to have options like to kind of creep from bush to bush, uh, get in close and, and use takedowns. And then of course you can always just like kind of kick in the front door and send in the tiger. And I tried. It didn't work, it didn't work very well. <laughs> anyway, um, something that my readers really want to know that has been in the mind of everyone since when the the game was announced as cross-platform, sorry, cross-generation, um, mm -hmm. as uh, what are the most important differences between the old generation version of the game and the new generation version of the game graphically? Graphically, I'm not really an expert on because I'm, I've been focused just on the kind of content side of mm -hmm. Shangri-La, but I can speak to the fact that we have kind of a, a team of, of technical people mm -hmm. who were basically able to just give me tools. Uh, I had an incredible amount of freedom on the level design team to just create what I wanted to create. Mm -hmm. So we were really able to, you know, I never ran into a wall where it was like, oh, we've got this great idea. Oh, you know, no memory. Yeah, no, exactly. It's, it's been amazing. The support that we've had from the tech and the way that, that our tech was able to kind of just stay out of our way and allow us to create was astounding. So you still didn't run into any memory issues in like PS3 or Xbox 360? Nope. It's actually pretty impressive. That yeah. Those must be some, some great tools. Yes, yes. I've been very grateful to the tech team. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to buy them a drink at the end of the project. Uh, the enemies you meet inside Shangri-La, they are pretty peculiar. Like, they definitely don't look human. No, no, in fact, uh, our, our shorthand language for them, we call them demons. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like an evil spirit that has come from an evil spirit world. Um, they're all somewhat similar to, to units that, that the player will see in the world of Kirat, mm -hmm. but they all have a, a fundamental difference that makes them unique to Shangri-La. Um, we have a unit called the Butcher, who is a melee unit who runs at you, 
but his special power is when he needs to, he can become invisible. He'll take a couple of steps to the side and then attack you from a new angle. So he's, he's still manages nasty. to scare Oh, he's super nasty. And he manages to scare me even after playing the game, you know, thousands of I times. I know I got killed a lot in the demo. <laughs> yes. Which uh, was pretty unexpected. Well, I didn't know you could mark people in, in the Shagri lab because, you know, you don't have a camera. You no. still have something. <laughs> yeah, you have something. In fact, you have kind of a, an old telescope. Because, yeah. I mean, the thing is, we didn't, when we were making Shangri La, we didn't want to make something where we had to teach people a whole new game. It still has to be far from you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's a component, it's one of the faces mm -hmm. of kind of the, the biggest character of Far Cry, which is, in fact is the world itself. Yes. So we wanted to make sure that it would be familiar enough. So, you know, takedowns work the same way in Shangri-La that they do in the world as you're at. Uh, you still are able to mark your targets because that's a, a core component of the gameplay there. Really. Yeah, it was uh, definitely very interesting, a little confusing at times, but I think that's intentional, right? right? It's, well, it's built to be a little confusing. Around. We're actually building it to really encourage you to explore. There's some areas where it's really kind of open to exploration, where it's not, you know, an obvious kind of paved road from yes. A to B. You really have to kind of look around your environment, see what's going on, look at where the enemies are, because they will always be giving you clues and kind of cues as to, as to how you progress. There are no neon signs in, in Shangri-La, I'm sure. That's exactly the point. Yes, that's exactly it. Well, that's a really interesting way to tell the story of a place. I don't think I've seen I've seen it done before. So I, I'm really glad to, to hear you say that. Actually, we, we spent, like I said, a, a lot of time just kind of finding that right fit and finding a way that we could yeah, uh, make it plug into the world. Has, has there been a lot of discussion between the team before getting to this decision? A lot of like uh, oh my yes, yes. Were there like uh, do you have like an an anecdote about some uh, other solution that was discarded in favor of Shangri-La? I don't really have an anecdote because the, the I mean, fundamentally, our, our path has never changed, but the kind of details on how to get there, we needed to make sure that we were a component of Kirat, that we were a way to add depth to this kind of giant world of Kirat. But finding the right way to do that without being too uh, alien to the player, like, you know, we, like I said, we didn't want to have to teach people new things. So finding a way to wrap that together took quite a lot so of So no one suggested mushrooms, I guess? No. No, no, no. In point of fact, in our minds, this is super different from the hallucination missions in Far Cry yeah, 3. Yeah, this is This is a legend. This is like a, a mythology. This has all of the kind of pomp and circumstances. And I heard that there aren't, sorry, that there aren't uh, as many quick time effects, quick time events. For no, in fight. point of fact, you, um, you may have seen one in the demo where... I didn't. Um, uh, when you're trying to take down one of our enemy types called the Scorcher, he's mm -hmm. the kind of biggest, toughest guy, yeah. he breathes fire. Uh, one of the things you actually, one of the ways you can take him down is you send the tiger at him, the tiger starts kind of grappling with him, and while he's distracted, you can kind of walk up behind him and do a takedown. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of the extent of it. It's really like just. Yeah, that's it's more really of just an execution gameplay. more than a quick time event. Yeah, in fact. Depending on your definition of it, we, we don't really have any quick time events because the, the player is telling us the story. We're we're not trying to tell the player the story. That's that's for us to you know, that's for us to see on YouTube hopefully. We're gonna watch how everybody does it and then finally we're gonna finally have that understanding of what is the legend of Shangri-La. So I'm guessing you're pretty enthusiastic about the new sharing feature of the new consoles so that you can see people, how, how they play your story. I, I don't know really anything about it, <laughs> but I am super enthusiastic about seeing how people play Shangri-La. Like oh. I said, this is, this is, you know, I feel like we're just handing over a kind of a cool toolbox and mm -hmm. saying, hey, tell me a cool story. So it's going to be even more uh, open-ended and uh, open path than uh, uh, the main story outside Shangri-La. Uh, I would say they're, they're actually quite different. Um, in Shangri-La, we know the beginning and the end, the end. of each sequence, right? Um, you know, in the demo you saw today, the end of that sequence is that you reach one of the bells of enlightenment. I will admit that I didn't, I didn't manage to get there. 
Okay. In fact, uh, I wasn't good enough. It's a it's a challenging demo for sure. Shangri La is going to be a, a challenging experience. We didn't want it to be, you know, kind of like a paved road and everything comes easily because it's a legend, right? Shangri La is the story of Kalanag, and Kalanag was a hero to the Karate people, right? <laughs> this guy is a legend, like. King Arthur or Hercules or somebody like that. Yeah. So his challenges have to be meaningful and significant so that you really appreciate them when you when you succeed. So it was it was on purpose that the enemies in, in uh, Shangri are actually very difficult to spot. Yes. Yes. Like because they, the thing is we, we had a um, we had a color palette yes. in mind that actually works with the legend. Uh, if you want to hear the story, the reason the whole world is kind of that, that red color mm -hmm. is because uh, Shangri-La is actually where the goddess Kyra first achieved Nirvana. And she did so by meditating in front of the bells of enlightenment. But as you saw in the demo, to reach them, you have to first spin one of the prayer wheels. And she was kind of impatient at how long it was taking to reach Nirvana. And she spun it kind of sharply with her hand. She pricked her finger and her blood ran down into the world and colored everything in the world. So, and the enemies blend in it very well. <laughs> they do blend it in a lot. I mean, if you if you go in and kind of do the, the kind of guns blazing run uh -huh. into scenarios uh, They style, will flank you a yeah, lot. They'll flank you and they'll come out. But if you kind of just take your time and take a look around, um, they, they will pop out. It's one of the things that um, uh, that we were looking for when we created the world was we wanted to create a bit of a contemplative feel in the environment and kind of encourage people to, uh, to coin the phrase to stop and smell the roses. We want you to stop and take a look around in the environment and see what's there. And then, oh wait, there's something moving over there and then, you know, a demon walks into view. Actually, you were talking the, the whole the whole word of uh, Shangri-La is red because of the blood of the, bo the goddess, but the blood of the demons is, bl is blue. That's right. That's on purpose, I guess. Yep. In fact, everything that comes from that negative world is actually um, has the, the kind of blue treatment on it. So you see, when uh, when the demons actually die, they actually dissolve back into the blue. Color. Yes. And, and and in the legend, they're actually being sucked back into the world, the kind of evil spirit world that they came from. Last question: uh, the the artificial intelligence. I found it a lot more challenging than in Far Cry 3 like uh, is it has it been improved considerably like is it something that I didn't just you know I'm not just seeing things right I don't know too much on the on the tech side about what they did but I know for sure that when we are able to put enemies down in a level mm -hmm. and especially when we kind of do our homework right you know we, we put them in good spots we give them good cover to use we give them good ways to get at the player they're tough these yeah, they guys are. the demons of Shangri-La are not, just not demons. easy to kill the, even the the guys outside in, in the in world the, they're the, the same yeah. like I died quite a lot. I, I admit that I'm normally used with uh, to uh, mouse and keyboard for right. first person, sh person shooters, but I normally don't die that much in, even with a <laughs> with a controller. So I was surprised. I was like, why am I sucking this much? Definitely, so. the the AI is very very effective, <laughs> and when combined, like I said, when it's combined with kind of good level design opportunities, there are really you know powerful ways for enemies to, to use their intelligence to get the upper hand on the player. The other thing is, you know, the, there are so many systems involved in, in the Far Cry world that if you're, if you're not kind of thinking about what's logical for the AI, you're probably going to be at their mercy. They're going to do things that are, that are smart, right? They, they're going to do things like if, if they see somebody die or if they see a body or something like that, of course they're going to come and investigate and they're going to do it intelligently. They're not going to send, you know, hey, one guy, why don't you go check that dark Back in corner. Fucker tree. Yeah, exactly. They're going to come in in a whole group, they're going to be covering each other and they're going to pose a real challenge to the player. Thank you very much. That was very enlightening. I can't wait to play the game. Uh, November 18th on PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One and PC.